So we are back in the ramps of the Stingers franchise mode here in NBA 2K17. The last episode we're gonna play another season of the Stingers franchise mode, and it's a season that we were close to making the NBA Finals, but we went and lost in the Eastern Conference Finals to the Orlando Magic, which unfortunately went and ended up our basically foiling our plans to have a season where we actually win the NBA championship once again with that uh, sim difficulty factor in it too. But right now, right now with this team though, with this team, I kind of want to make. Uh, some big decisions this season though like who, should we move on for some certain players should we go and add even more assets onto this team and make it a super team next season in order to go win a championship with the sim difficulty thing because the sim difficulty thing is pretty tough you could have a team that is like leagues and bounds better than most teams in the nba yet it's still not as good and you lose in like four games to a team that's just full of mid 70s players so you really have no idea how to win this game except just stacking your team to the point where you could almost like win the entire season 82 and 0 again. So we're gonna start the season though, 7 2, not too bad of a record right here. Our team, it's the same old, same old. We have Russell Westbrook Jr., Russell Westbrook 2, sorry, at point guard. Then at shooting guard, we do have, I believe, Randall Hope this season at E2 overall. He's doing pretty well though with his upgrading and stuff because his stats, I remember back in the day when he drafted him, I believe he was like. I don't know, he was like 75 overall, and then he slowly jumped up to 82 overall and becoming one of the, those vital parts on this team. But as you can see, though, sometimes in the sim, it pauses for like a long time, though. That's just based on the fact that we're so deep in the franchise mode that it just takes forever to go and sim an entire season. So you can tell that's pretty different when that happens. But right now, 36 and 10, not too bad record right now. Number one in the East, second is the Magic with five and a half games back. Now seven, and seven games back here going into this All-Star break. We finished 45 and 11, not too bad of a record. Willis Todd is number one for MVP. We have Frank Perry, third in MVP. Why is he number one? Is it number one? I have no idea why. We have Ballastery, though, number one in six man of the year. It's the first time in a very long time I've actually seen one of our players be on there for six man of the year, for at least number one six man of the year. But right now, number number two in defensive player is Rabu Akedia, doing very well right there, most improved and so on. So, Eastern Conference All-Stars, we do have Frank Perry and Cody Wilkins, plus Kyle Brady in there too, and Rabu Ikeidia made it on there too, finally. So, Rabu, he's kind of stepping up big. I remember drafting him, I believe 14th overall or 11th overall. I'm not really sure where we drafted him, but right now, he's doing very well right now, number or number, number two, I guess, in DPY. Then he's on the All-Star team, but right now, you have to go ahead and re-sign the man, 92 overall, might as well re-sign him to 3-year deal. Though you have Ryan Best on the bench, 30, 75 overall, 22 years old, 3 years, not too bad of a record right there for a salary. So, take a look at our game so far, heading into the All-Star break. You have Ballastery, 37 points in that game, Frank Perry, 36 and 13, Frank Perry, 39 and 10, and uh, yeah, you get to see how well our team is playing. You can also see how well Garberto or Gilberto is playing so far in the season. He's playing very good, coming off the bench though, and just playing a vital role in this team that we need to go and win some games. Right now, Russell Westbrook 31 in that game, but he did take a look at the Eastern Conference All-Star game. It wasn't the greatest. We have Cuddy Wilkins 19 and 10, not too bad right there. The All-Star games are never really that entertaining though. Hopefully in real life, like even in real life, they're really boring because a lot of it is just slam dunks and goofing around, which it should be that, but at the same time, you want to see a little bit more competitive fire and some actual players trying on defense though, like Steph Curry lying down against Giannis when he's going for the dunk, it's pretty weak there, but uh, I know it's just all a joke, but still, it just basically demonstrates how well the defense is in the All-Star games, but take a look at your MVP and stuff, the awards are not that big, except for Bui Kiki gets Defensive Player of the Year there, 17.5 rebounds, 17.9 points, that's insane, I haven't seen that in years in this game, so... I mean, that's crazy, and Carl Anthony Towns gets coach of the year with the Utah Jazz this season, 63-19, not too bad of a record right there. Ball NBA first team, you have no stingers there, all NBA second team, you have no stingers there. Third team, we finally have Cody Wilkins, but no Frank Perry on all NBA teams this season, which is pretty weird to see that. All defensive first team, we do have uh, Rabu Adekadia on there, our defensive player of the year. And second team, you have Cody Wilkins on there. But no Frank Perry once again, so Frank Perry either is injured or something really went wrong this season. But right now, let's take a look at the stats of Frank Perry without that lower left leg stress fracture. That's why he was not on the all NBA teams, and that's why we didn't get that huge hardware at the end of the season with MVP. But Frank Perry, great season out of him though. Yeah, the rest though, like we have Gerberto, not that bad of a season though, coming off the bench, playing very well for us. It's the first time in a very long time, I think ever since the Francis Jenkins days, that he actually had a good six man coming off the bench getting some points per game, but our first round matchup is against the Miami Heat, they need 45 and 37, their team then again is very subpar, but at the same time, as I said in the beginning, subpar teams tend to go and beat the teams that are leagues and bounds better than them, so game on, we take that one, 160, 97 final, so he won 63 points, 
in that game as uh, for, it looks like Cuddy Wilkins 42 in that one. Good game at him. But game two here in Cincinnati. They take this one 1 1 series here in Cincinnati here after Bruno Acadia 30, 24 points, 13 boards in that one. But Terry 39 points. And they won 143-119 final. But game three, they took that one 2-1 series lead for the Miami Heat as Terry 29-15 and 2. I don't know how they have a series lead. 122-101 final as Russell Russell Westbrook 25 and 14 assists in that one. Six steals, not that bad of a game out of him right there, except for shooting the basketball. He was horrible at that. But uh game four, we tied all up a 2-2-2 series here at 134-127 final in that one. But Russell Westbrook 29 points, 11 assists in that one. Rabu 22 points. 24 rebounds. This man is insane. He's playing like Bismack Beyond in the playoffs last season. But game five, we take that one three, two series lead for us as 141, 116 final is that game. But Balistery, 30 points in that one. We have Acadia 19 to 24. Great game for him in that one. And Vincent, not too bad, coming out the, playing in that game for the Heat. But game five or game six, they take that one 153, 116 final, a 3 3 series. We're going to a game seven in round one. So. I don't know how he went to games, or they even pushed us to a game 7 here, as they're just unrelentless though, playing very well, Terry 49 points now, but game 7 here, winner goes on, face off against Chicago Bulls, they're in the semifinals, we're in Cincinnati, we gotta go and take this one, to go and prove that we're a team, that can beat, at least beat a team that is subpar, I guess, but we do 155, 126 finally, move on to the semifinals to face off against the Chicago Bulls, but we have Russell Westbrook 37 points in that one, I believe Wilkins at 37 in that one too, so great game, now those two, and Terry 49, in that loss. So, facing off against the Chicago Bulls here in the semis as, yet again, a subpar team full of mid 70s players. So, hopefully, they don't go and take us to game seven and make us all worn out and tired. But, uh, Forley's out, Matt Sparks is out. Should be a good opportunity to go and sweep these Bulls here in this series. Ballastery, 34 points in game one. We win 130, 109 final. But game two here in Cincinnati. We take that one, 2 nothing series lead for us. As Westbrook, 22 points in that one. Ballastery, 21 in that one. As we played a very good game there in Cincinnati. But game three, first game in Chicago. We take that one, 3 nothing series lead for us. A chokehold lead over these Bulls. As Westbrook, 28 points in that one. And Acadia, 24 and 26. Huge game for him. Rebounding the ball and shooting the basketball, 224 points. Is not that bad. But game four, we go sweep the Bulls, move on to the ECF. We do 122-118 finals. So 4-point W for us. We move on in a sweep to the Eastern Conference Finals as Rabu, 25 points, 23 rebounds. Insane game for him, though. A DPOI winner there in the NBA this season. But Farley, 20 points and 29 points in that one. And move on to the ECF to take on, yet again, the Orlando Magic. So the Magic took us out last season. We gotta go get some revenge. And revenge is a dish best served cold. So we gotta take them out here as their team. They have a decent team, though. They have Hobbs, 88 overall. Gregory, 86. Jeffrey Cole, 84. But the rest, though, is pretty much average. As game 1, we took out one of the lead for us. As Wilkins, 45 points, 5 boards, 12 assists now, and 2 steals, 3 blocks. Great stat line for that game. 7 for 10 from the 3-point line. But Peacock... 32 in that one. I thought he was injured, but I guess not. Game 2 of the CF took that one to the next series lead for us as Wilkins, 26 points, 8 boards, 7 assists, 6 deals. Great stat line that game as Cole puts a 23 in a loss. But Game 3, a string hole lead over the Magic as we take a 30 nothing series lead in this game. 129-126 final, a 3-point W in that one. But Westbrook, 39 points. He drops 39 in that huge game. As Game 4, we winner basically goes and moves on to the NBA Finals. We do 142-114 final. We move on to the Finals. The first time in years, I think the first time ever since we went and changed that rule to the sim difficulty rule. So now it's, it's pretty much big here. We got to go and win the finals, but we have facing off either against the OKC Thunder or the, the Memphis Grizzlies. We face off against the Memphis Grizzlies here in the finals as they have a huge team. They have Tyler Weaver, Clay Anthony Hoffman. I mean, those two, they played very well in the regular season, so you got to watch for them. You have Hoffman there too at power forward, 86. Their center's at 83 overall, but our team... Seems a lot better though. We have Westbrook, Westbrook 82 overall. We have Hope 82. Cody Wilkins 97 overall. 40, 75 overall. Franklin and 92 overall. Boo Acadia. We have the bench. We have the starting lot to go and win this NBA Finals here. But we have injuries though too. You have Frank Perry and Law Bailey out with injuries, major injuries in fact. So we gotta win this game. Hopefully game one. But we lose 152, 148 final in game one. They take a one I think series lead in the series as Rabu 29 points, 22 boards now and huge game for him. But Still not enough to go and take that W, which is the most important thing at this point in time. But game two here, still in Cincinnati, we have the overall home court advantage, but they take that one 129, 120 final here. As they take a 2 0 series lead in this game, as I don't know how we lose, we have home court advantage, but yet we lose those two games to a weaker team in the Grizzlies. So I don't know what's going on, but Tyler Weaver, 30 points, 4 rebounds, 11 assists now, and our stats. 
It's not working out for us on paper, but game three uh, in here in Memphis, first game of Memphis. But we take this one 135, 118 final. We take, maybe make this one a 2 1 series lead here for the Grizzlies as uh, Kitty, 26 points or 23 points. 18 boards now in huge game for him yet again. But then again, Tyler Eve for 27 points, 2 boards, 11 assists. Not enough to go and win that game for them. But game 2 1 series lead at this point for them. So in the game 5 of the NBA Finals, we're gonna go to make this one a 2 2 series, all type of 2 apiece here in the finals. We have to do it. But they win 151, 131 final, and now they take a 3 to 1 series lead here in the finals. We gotta come back from 3 1. Hopefully, you play like the Cavs, come back from 3 1. But KD, 23 points, 25 boards. Huge game for him yet again, but still didn't get that W. The most important th thing at this point in time. We have to go and win this one to stay alive in this finals. He hits the first one, and that brings them to within 10. And good on the second, so he makes them both. And the Memphis Grizzlies are your new NBA champions. Well, they did it, and as they celebrate, you can just see the relief, the exhilaration that comes with winning it all. And Clark, you have to hand it to the entire organization. They work together to get right here. And guys, what a reward for the fan base. I mean, I know one thing, they're going to enjoy this memory for a long, long time. And we have enjoyed our time with you folks all season long. This is Kevin Harlan saying so long. Have a wonderful summer. And the Grizzlies win the NBA championship. So we lose game six or game five of the finals. And Weaver is your MVP there in the finals. 86, 86 overall. Great finals out of him. But I don't know how he lost that one. They have the same finals path to as us. As you went to game seven in round one, we won that one. Same as them. Then series two, they went and won that one in a sweep. We won that one in a sweep. And series three in the finals, the conference finals, they take it, they win in a sweep. We win in a sweep. So we move on to the finals and they win against us in that one. But we take a look at retirements though. We have no really big retirements. If Carlton Jenkins, it's basically about it at this point. Plus, if Archie Wells, the former stinger himself on the Ravens, 74 overall, he's kind of gone down. We traded him in the offseason last episode. So that's probably why he's not on the team at this point. But right now, He's a decent overall player of the week. We started off his career, we drafted him first overall for, in the 2042 NBA draft. He played very well for us in the a season with us, but when it came to going over to the other teams, just didn't play as well as we thought he would, and probably won't make the finals or the Hall of Fame at this point in his career. But six-time champ, four-time all-star here in the NBA. Not too bad of a stat line or award sheet for a guy like Archie Wells. But take a look at the rest of the players, though. Like Ted Humphreys, and that's basically about it. But take a look at Hall of Fame, though. We have Fr Frank Hopkins, who retired at the last minute, though. So we have Carlton Jenkins and Daryl Fowler there in the Hall of Fame, a 2057 Hall of Fame draft class, or Hall of Fame uh, retirement class. But jersey retirement, so we have Daryl Fowler, two teams retired as jersey, we have Clayton York, and so on. But look, League Meetings changed the shot clock to 24 seconds. It's a 32-2 rule at this point. It's approved for that one. I mean, if the league wants it, might as well do it. So you return it to the former overall, I guess, shot clock timing because it's at 20 seconds for years I believe like 35 years is that shot the, the 20 second shot clock but now 24 back again to the original thing but Cavs on the first overall pick as we move on to the next draft the 2057 MBE draft gonna make some splashes here if you want to make the team better than ever with the first pick in the NBA draft the Cleveland Cavaliers select Troy Jeffries from Clemson University. the 
Minnesota Timberwolves select Nate Galloway from Duke University. So as I said, we had to make some splashes if we want to make the team better, and we absolutely did that with this one. So we acquired the second overall pick there for a few first round picks. 81 overall, Lamont Wade, 22 years old, great player for the bench there, coming off the bench, baby at six man. Plus, we went and picked up Clee Anthony Gibbs Jr., I believe, at fourth overall. So great overall pickups there, as our team got a lot better than it was before the NBA draft. But Lamont Wade, though, it says that since Stingers can be a dynasty in a few years, they're picking up Lamont Wade. Some people don't, don't really want him on this team. As uh, Take a look at the rest of the opinions, though. As now they think that since we picked up Lamont Wade, we clinched the first overall pick there in the draft already. But that's not going to happen, though. Our team is way too good to do that. As Clay Anthony Gibbs Jr., though, he's got great overall stats for the team. 28.5 points per game average in college. A two, his shooting's not that bad. His stats are not that bad for a player coming out of the draft class. So... I love his stats coming out with this draft. Hopefully, it plays well for us and steps it big in year one. But game, the, the signings that we signed both of those guys in the draft, but take a look at our overall options. You have Enyema, and we're not going to go and sign him because he wants 3.8 mil for guys like 74 overall. But our options, though, in the league, practically everyone accepted their options except Andrew there in that top 10. So it's going to be probably a weak overall free agency class. Take a look at our overall free agents. We have Randall Hope. Who wants 20.15 mil for five years? We do not have the hard cap room as we may we have a 20.11 million hard cap room, and he wants 28. So, in order to do that, we go get, get rid of some players like Lamont Bailey, though. As Bailey, he just wants way too much money, so we go and trade him. Now we finally have a hard cap room of 30.01 million. We can go and sign Randall Hope if we want to. So, for agency, we have Paul Tista, we have Hendricks, Richardson, Andrew, Pat Dominopoulos, we have Hope, Peacock, Hamlin, McKinley, and so on. As a free agency class, not that good though the season has. I thought it'd be a lot better than it was, but we sent Jorge Barrera Jr. there in our first overall thing of free agency right there because we need him for the bench. But then it takes, we take a look at our overall next thing, just getting rid of Wendell Paul there for that salary dump. And take a look at overall free agency we could go and sign, and we finally went and could sign Randall Hope there at four years, 123 million. Not too bad right there for a player who'd be probably playing a certain lap this season. But take a look at overall progression though for the next season. As progression, 
It's not that bad though. 84 overall, Rattle Hope, not too bad there. But Howard Gregory, number one overall there in the draft next year. 29 points per game, or 29 points in that overall. Hoop Summit as Taft. 75 overall, but 73, 74. This is gonna be a week, probably going to be a weak draft class next season. This season for us was very good. We picked up Lamont Wade there and Clean Anthony Gibbs. That's why we went and picked up those guys because this draft class is so good for us this season. But I guess it's nice to off here. Make sure to subscribe for more Singers Friendships Bowl. And thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.